everybody, this is Joe. Thank you for watching my Giga Texas construction update video. For today's intro, I want to give you a brief update on what is going on with Tesla's lithium refinery plant near Corpus Christi, Texas. Now, thanks to John Cargill of Ground Truth Picks and also Felix Schlang from the What About It channel, we got some new images that show the state of construction of the main plant. Now, this is the official rendering of how the plant will look when it is completed. It is broken into three main parts, the pyrometallurgical part, the hydrometallurgical part, and the final processing section, as you can see by this image. And most of the pictures that we got uh, that we're gonna be looking at today are in this yellow section, which is part of the pyro and hydrometallurgical sections of the site. Here's the first of the three photos. Great, nice, close-in shot. This shows some of the steel superstructure, the concrete bases, and the rotating kiln on the top and the rotating cooler. This is a critical part of processing the spodumene concentrate, which is the raw material that comes into the plant and eventually will create the lithium hydroxide for the battery cathode plant up at Giga Texas. To help put this more into context, this is what they looked like when they were under construction back in August. Now on the left is the cooler transfer unit, and it is a rotary cooler. It tumbles material in a rotating drum in the presence of chilled or ambient air. It follows on the right the rotary kiln. The rotary kiln is a pyroprocessing device which uses a lot of heat and it raises materials to high temperature, which is called calcination, and it's in a continuous process. And this feeds into the cooler, and this is what is the first step of changing that spodumene concentrate into lithium hydroxide. Now, referring back to the render, I'm showing you that this is the first of two parallel processing parts of the uh, plant, and we're looking at just the first of those two the goal is to get this online soon, and then once the first half of the plant is operating, then they'll get the second half of the plant at a later date, probably later this year. This wider angle shot is a great one to give us a good perspective on the steel superstructure, the rotary kiln and cooler mounted on those really substantial concrete bases. And on the right-hand side of the screen in the forms and partial concrete poured areas, we can see these structures are part of the hydrometallurgical processing section of the plant. And this will continue to the right of the image and this again is the first part of two parallel processing lines for the plant. So anyway, I haven't had a chance to get down there in a couple of months, but I hope to do so when I head down to the next Starship launch. But this at least gives you some sense of the state of construction now at the Corpus Christi Lithium Plant. And also, hopefully, the context and additional information gives you an idea of what we're seeing and uh, kind of a basis of how the construction is progressing. I still have quite a bit to go before this plant will be operational. And finally, if you'd like to learn more, you can take a look at my six-part series where I go into a lot of depth detail with images and video about the lithium plant. The link is at the bottom of the screen and in the video description. So now let's get into the drone. Let's fly around Giga Texas and let's take a look at what we can find under construction and the progress today. If you would like to support my efforts, please consider using these links, which will be in the video description. If you are interested in Tesla products, you can help yourself and support me by using my referral code. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons on my YouTube video as this helps as well. Thank you. My drones are ready and raring to go. Let's go flying over Giga Texas. It's a beautiful day to fly here at Giga Texas. There's uh, several milestone moments that we'll see throughout the video, uh, particularly up near the Megapack site. But for right now, we're going to start on the south end where the steel assembly continues and the entire width of this south end construction site is nearly filled with some of the steel items. Taking a look on the left, we can see that there are two kind of independent structures growing together around the crane right now. And this will continue to build towards the east on those footings and the perimeter grade beam to join up with this structure. 
And this one is also continuing to uh, develop. Right now they're picking up the floor and the roof decking and pre-positioning it onto the beams that have already been installed. And then they will continue that work to pour concrete like you see here in this part of the site as well. And also preparation for more of the windows that uh, have the mounts here on the south side. On this corner, we can uh, get a good view here of the first large pane being installed on the second floor. That large yellow item is a kind of a suction cup design with a counterbalanced beam, and that's what uh, the crane uses to pick up those very large pieces of glass, and then they're installed onto those mounts. And you can see many more of those along both sides uh, of the uh, floor on the top floor and the bottom floor all getting ready for more of the glass. As we fly over towards the southeast corner where the tanks are being installed, we can see that all four of them have now reached the four steel uh, piece uh, height. So they are all equally of the uh, height and it looks like there's some uh, sections being delivered by trucks that may indicate that the highest level may have been attained. You can see those kind of arcing items on that truck. There's a good view of the entire south end from this perspective looking towards the west. I'll bring the drone down here in between the steel structure on the left and the main building on the right. I want to give you a good view of the work that continues on the right hand side of the screen where the footings have having those tie bars uh, being excavated and formed in concrete uh, so that's about where the boring tunnel might come through if that's what the plan is. Here's a good view of these two independent steel structures with more steel items getting ready for installation. And they're going to have to move that crane very soon to be able to complete that steel structure. Next to the concrete wall, uh, we can see the continued work on these large footings with little rebar cages and some of the column mounts and uh, again that gap in that perimeter grade beam on the left hand side and then here where they're continuing to prepare for that perimeter grade beam that will join into the existing wall. As we take a look at the two loading platforms this gives a good view of uh, how these look today and of course the open section where materials are being brought in and as we continue to turn back toward the west we'll see that there are many cyber trucks in this Southwest uh, temporary staging location. Some of these still are waiting for plastic parts that go around the top parts of the bed. And we see one of the mobile superchargers has been moved from the east side over to this location. Perhaps this is uh, uh, indicating that there's gonna be uh, continued cyber trucks here and they wanna have a supercharging capability in that area, something to monitor. So let's uh, get ready to cross over the highway and let's take a look at what's going on with the Boring Company tunnel today. And what we are seeing is the uh, thrust ring is being uh, picked up by that crane and getting ready for mounting onto the heavily reinforced uh, concrete mount with those uh, four eyelets and that will help to secure that uh, thrust frame. And then the rest of the items that you see here uh, in the black wrapping and at least that one on the left where the wrapping has been removed, those will be all assembled onto the end of the existing proof rock uh, in the middle of the screen. And once that is all completed, we'll be able to get a good sense of the angle of the initial tunnel drilling and how this entire site uh, will operate. Uh, also, we can see those uh, silos for the cement grout and some of the other uh, materials there. And we can see the dirt spoil section with those concrete Lego kind of blocks. And that's where the belts will remove the dirt and deposit it for removal from the site. It's a good look at the uh, new outbound lot. You can see those frames that are dotted along the asphalt uh, near where the uh, painted marking lines are. And you can see some right here. This is where the light poles for the lighting system will be installed. It looks like they're getting ready for that to happen soon. They've also put some yellow markings uh, with numbers to indicate which of those uh, shipping locations uh, uh, are uh, present on that outbound lot. On the south end, we see continued work on the supercharger installation, and uh, they have these double rows closest to the, uh, the facility itself. It'll be interesting to see if that is the final location or how they're going to have these arranged. But uh, 
Um, there's going to be at least 64, but I still believe more superchargers once all this installation is completed. The asphalt on the east side of the uh, end of line facility has been poured and uh, laid out and we saw that happening on my previous video and it looks like preparation is underway here on the west side to do the same there's a lot of the concrete curbing that has been installed and that will define where we will see the asphalt also more work here with some of the scaffolding around the hvac ducting on this side of the building and those modular units that were installed on the concrete pads more of the trench work here for the lighting system. Uh, still waiting for the conduits to be installed. And of course, here's a good view of more of that uh, curbing where asphalt will be uh, laid down soon. And the north end of the building, still waiting to see some of the windows installed onto that uh, kind of that section that juts out towards the drone. And a good view of that east, that east side where the uh, asphalt has been installed. Uh, Put down on this part of the factory. We also see some mounts which will probably be for a lighting system on the asphalt. So let's uh, get ready to cross back over the highway. We'll resume from this side and bring the drone down. I want to show you some developments at the uh, west main entrance and uh, what we see is some trench work, some more of the wooden forms and rebar and uh, you can get a good sense from this low down look at what is going on here and more construction uh, and they've already added one of these in a smaller section on the right hand side where you see the wood and it looks like now they are continuing it across this side so uh, be interesting to see what that looks like once that is completed coming up onto the roof we'll fly over the solar panels and uh, I want to show you this uh, section of the roof again that has had the roof decking removed. In my previous video, I was able to give you really good views down inside, but you can see those uh, three yellow tanks and some of the manifold system and the Evapco chiller units all arranged underneath the open section of the roof. And it looks like they're doing some curb work around the open section. So soon we will most likely start seeing those uh, vent ducks on the west side brought over here moved up onto the roof for installation here's a good view looking across the power lines towards the east and taking a look at the activity here near where the multi-level parking garage is continuing to be installed we see double t panels on the left getting ready to be lifted up and added to more of the extension of this building to the north also a good view of the roof section that has had that concrete poured and we saw that on my previous video as well that will continue throughout the entire structure and all levels and also this middle section where they have all the footings and those uh kind of that small grade beams in the middle where the ramps for the vehicles will be built and a good look here with more of the road work and the intersection on the lower part of the screen and to the right plus additional uh, equipment and blue piping that has been uh, stored on this side plus the concrete sections more of those double t's and some more of the columns all waiting for installation onto the multi-level parking garage on this side of the site <music> Here's a closer view of those double T's and the columns. Also, you can see how the building is continuing to extend to the north in that middle section of the screen. So let's uh, bring the drone down a little lower and take a look at uh, some more of this part of the construction site uh, from this vantage point. Again, more of the concrete items on those trailers staged here temporarily until they're needed in the a multi-level parking garage and also the road is really taking shape now with the dual lanes and the median uh, being prepared and really starting to emerge here from the dirt this will of course uh, uh, extend robotic avenue what was on the right all the way down to river road on the south end the testing and calibration lot uh, does not look like it has a lot of vehicles today. The water near the Rainmaker here with the orange doors looks like they have been doing some testing of vehicles in this section. And of course, the test track on the left and that uh, enclosure where you see all the employees 
doing some final checkouts of the vehicles before they're ready for transport. The superchargers are only about half full today, but we do see many of the vehicles, uh, mostly not model Ys, one Cybertruck getting ready to enter into this section. We do see uh, about six Cybertrucks here lining up on this part of the testing and calibration lot. And as we cross over this road, we'll get a good sense of how the outbound lot looks today. Uh, Cybertrucks again intermixed with the uh, Model Ys throughout both of the sides. A lot of trucks lined up waiting for uh, pickup. And I did notice several of these trucks lined up on the frontage roads outside of Giga, Texas. So I think they were just waiting for the production to ramp up here on this early morning to uh, pick them up at their designated times. As you can see here, there's a couple of cyber trucks loaded up onto this particular truck. And as I mentioned, more trucks arriving uh, pretty much constantly now uh, around the site. Returning to the east side of the main factory, I wanted to show you here the receiving doors are getting those enclosures, very similar to what you see on the left. It's a great sign and indicates that these are almost ready for operation and of course that uh, concrete apron will need to be poured and we should see that soon. This is the section where we've seen electrical conduit wires and also a new section of concrete over the vaults next to the perimeter grade beam and the wall of the building. So that's a great sign that that work is nearly completed as well. Many, many of the castings are arrayed on the east side here and the north east side of the casting machine structure. A lot of these are model Ys, but also a good number of them are front and rear castings for the Cybertruck. So a great indication for production. As we come down onto the roof here, I wanted to give you a good view of this uh, continuing installation of the uh, ventilation system that's been installed with those ducted fans, those filtration units, and of course those uh, square steel, galvanized steel uh, ventilation ducting that uh, has been installed. And this is now very close to having this completed. And I know that this is uh, serving the casting machine structure, but I've had some viewers suggest that they think that it may also be supporting the nearby paint shop in the middle of the building. But uh, it is great to see that this is uh, being completed, as I know that this is one of the priorities that they needed to get done for this part of the factory. As I bring the drone down, it's a good view on the side of the uh, building, the extended berm, more of the work where the conduit uh, was located, and getting ready to widen that concrete apron out. Some of the dumpsters for the flashing that's been removed from the castings, many castings. Some on the ground, some in racks along this side of the building. Almost all of these are Cybertruck and, of course, the open vault on the bottom where some of that electrical wire uh, continues to be uh, uh, finalized as far as their connections all the way up to the electrical switch yard. Here is a very interesting uh, thing that we're seeing. Not only are we seeing the Cybertruck castings, but those large boxes have boxed up uh, some uh, castings as well for the Cybertruck. So I don't know if those are departing or arriving or what the purpose is for putting them into those wooden crates. The 4680 battery cell production area that is getting the internal expansion continues to see a lot of work. And those two uh, temporary elevators are operational now. And the steel items here uh, lined up to go inside next to that new temporary uh, loading platform. So seems to be a lot of work continuing on the inside to prepare for those additional four production lines. The roof section over the 4680 battery cell production that has had some issues continues to have repairs. You can see those cleaned kind of stripes along some of the main sections. The bricks are still here holding down the membrane. And uh, we also see more of those ripples on this section next to that fire break wall. So whatever work they're doing, it looks like there's going to be still additional work to get this part of the roof uh, uh, sealed back so that uh, it's uh, weatherproof and we don't have any problems with it. It's kind of flapping in the breeze. So let's get ready to take a look at some developments at the Megapack site today. So 
So we pass over this uh, small material staging and those two contractor trailer areas. It does look like it's still being cleaned up uh, uh, slowly, but uh, nonetheless being cleaned up. And uh, that will probably be gone at some point in the near future. Now, an interesting development here today concerning the mega packs is that uh, it looks like the mega packs themselves connected to the building uh, are, are not connected. We can get a close in view here. You see those open uh, kind of uh, breaker arms. They're all kind of uh, uh, in the middle of the screen. Those black items that are kind of hanging down, they would need to be up to be able to connect the mega pack to the main building. However, a big change is right here. The three uh, swivel uh, double ended disconnects have now been uh, turned and they are connected. So power is being delivered from the grid to the mega packs, which also implies that they could go the opposite direction too. So maybe uh, working with ERCOT, uh, Tesla is now able to provide a peaker plant replacement to stabilize the grid as needed through this mega pack. So a big milestone and something I've been waiting for for quite some time. And I'll continue to watch and see when it has those uh, connections so that the batteries can also serve at Giga Texas. Flying over the new electrical switch yard, uh, one of the biggest things that we see on the south end is that temporary electrical switch yard continuing to have disassembly. Crews are working on the A-frames now. The one on the left has had all of the insulators removed. The one on the right has had most of the items removed with just a few remaining. And you can see some of them on the ground. Uh, it also shows a lot more of the uh, uh, steel components have been removed and as well as that cable tray trench in the middle. So uh, maybe another week or two and this uh, entire site may be completely gone. So let's fly up over towards the battery cathode plant and the dye shop. And I want to show you some developments. And what we're going to do is continue farther to the northeast over the old sand and gravel mine hills and ponds and some of those trees that you see. And I want to come up towards the uh, rental equipment a lot on you'll see that coming up on the left hand side of the screen plus a lot of the excavation work that has been going on in the middle of the screen and the removal of the power poles and uh, power lines plus the little uh, dirt islands that those were on those are all gone now and this is a good view of the rental equipment lot with uh, those rounded top Quonset hut items that are used as the workshops and maintenance shops uh, we also see a lot of water here. I'm not sure if that's uh, from rain or if it's also from some of the water table or a combination of both, but you can see why they need to continue to raise the grade here to uh, uh, prepare this for perhaps more construction or for whatever plans that they have for this particular area. But as we continue to fly back towards the uh, battery cathode plant, uh, it's a good view of just what the uh, current status is of this far northeast area plus some of the materials and those tanks still waiting here for installation. Now, as we approach the east side of the uh, battery cathode plant, we see a few developments that are of interest. We see some wall panel uh, now by the tree on that, uh, uh, that trailer waiting for installation somewhere. We also see the center section that has had the asphalt poured. It's being now used as a temporary parking lot and also for trailers and possibly some generators. And all this is right next to the wade pit. Next to the wall of the cathode plant, we see preparation for most likely more asphalt and uh, how this is starting to look. And of course, as I mentioned before, the materials and trailers and equipment continues to be moved away from this side. So it uh, is slowly being cleaned up and giving the appearance that this entire side may be in asphalt soon. On the south end of the crash test facility, we can see that that uh, foundation had been poured and there's rebar suggesting that we're going to see a vertical structure coming up from that in the near future. And I'll pull the drone back, give you a good view of the entire east side from this vantage point and how it is looking. Uh, one thing I did notice is the south end of the battery cathode plant has had almost all of the wall panels installed. In fact, just the small one is remaining. And I think this is a great indication that this part has uh, had all of the assembly of the equipment on the inside. On my previous video, I was able to get the last photos on the inside before the wall panels came up. So uh, check that out if you want to see what it looks like with the um, uh, 
uh, pneumatic blenders inside that area. As I bring the drone down, we'll fly through the alleyway. Uh, most of the concrete has been poured here now, so they're using it as parking also for some of the materials and uh, the deliveries. Looks like that uh, grub uh, automation uh, crate was getting ready to be moved inside. And on the chiller plant, we can see uh, the still remaining section on the ground for some concrete to, to be poured on either side um, near the tanks and then on the north side of the chiller plant. And the chiller plant itself uh, looks like uh, it's uh, really coming along as far as operational and uh, being tidied up. I'm still curious what's going on where those plastic walls are located. Another large section of asphalt has been poured here next to the building on the west side, plus preparation for more concrete over the stormwater pipes that uh, uh, go underneath this trench next to that tree all the way up to the lift station. As I cross back over, I wanted to show you, uh, you can tell that there's another one of those wall panels on the bottom of the screen getting ready for installation. The concrete has been poured on this new apron section just north of these five receiving doors. Also, trucks are loaded up there, so this implies we're starting to see some sort of testing and or production or a combination of both going on within the factory. We see another concrete section here on the asphalt area just to the south of the lift station, plus a generator now has been moved here. So it uh, looks like they may be either testing or have it partially operational. Another section of asphalt here in the middle of the western uh, section. And you can note that it's a lot cleaner as far as materials, equipment, and uh, other items. So another positive sign. Still have a lot of water standing on the west side of the dye shop, but otherwise... Uh, this whole section looks like it's uh, nearing the point where we'll probably see additional asphalt uh, poured around the entire site, which would be a, a great sign. So anyway, there's a quick view of Giga Texas as it looked here on Tuesday, the 6th of February. Hope you enjoyed the information about the lithium plant by Corpus Christi in the intro, plus everything we were able to see and talk about in the video. As always, thank you very much for your support. I appreciate it. I hope you have a great rest of the week. Take care.